I was a soccer referee in the United States for 15 years. And when you think about soccer and you think about international relations, uh, it, it's hard to, to know even where to begin with the parallels. The idea of offense, the idea of defense, the idea of um, relying upon um, psychological tools uh, against an opponent, the material capabilities, the training, uh, there, everything about international politics and international relations is embodied on a pitch uh, between two sides uh, who are kicking a round ball and trying to score. The difference, though, uh, between soccer and international affairs is that there's a central authority. In world politics, there's only anarchy. There is no central authority in international politics, and that's what shapes the ways in which states organize their offense, organize their defense, uh, and marshal their, their resources. In soccer, there's a referee. He has a red card. He has a yellow card. He has a whistle. Like any political scientist, I study the use of power. In particular, the use of power in international affairs, but it's the use, it's the abuse, and it's the constraints on power that are always the central focus of the kind of work that I do. We have a research group here, thanks to the Einstein Foundation at the Free University in Berlin, uh, with a postdoctoral fellow uh, and a, uh, a doctoral candidate myself. And we're interested in, in the issue of shifts in the relative balance of power in East Asia. Everyone focuses on the rise of China, but fewer people focus on the relative decline of the United States. And we want to understand both and how that affects the kinds of choices for national security that Japan is being forced to make. Japan will not be able to balance China on its own. Japan and the United States each have to find uh, new vehicles, new, new mechanisms uh, for their security cooperation, and those mechanisms include other nations in the region, India, Australia, and so forth. And those dynamics are new dynamics and uh, of enormous consequence for the rest of the world. I first realized that Japan would become a central part of my intellectual life when I arrived in Japan for the first time, armed with social science theories and realizing that Japanese practice defied them. Uh, there are so many examples from sociology, from economics, from politics, but to take an economic example. In the Western theory, we say that you produce for consumers. Uh, for the Japanese, for many years, it was different. It was about consuming for production. And turning social science on its head was something that happened so often that I became fascinated to see how that works and how we could make better theory as a result from uh, incorporating the Japanese practice. Berlin provides a wonderful research environment for someone like myself who values the chance to work with colleagues who share similar research interests. Uh, at the universities, the think tanks, the government agencies, there's a large number of very well-informed and very interesting colleagues who work on East Asian security uh, with whom I interact on a regular basis. And the opportunity to have a research group at, at one of the universities um, where we can really dig very deeply into, uh, into these subjects is, uh, is a, wonderful, a wonderful opportunity.